it should surprise absolutely no one that the Navy has a big presence here at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Not only are there secretive behind closed door talks to be had with the ship manufacturers, the IAE is a prime opportunity for recruitment. For many ship enthusiasts, the only way they'll ever get to fly the incredibly fast and powerful machines on display here is to sign up and serve. Going a long way on that front is the presence of the Reckless Squadron 999 and their stunning flight acrobatics. Nothing prepared me for how much I wanted to climb into a sabre after seeing what those insanely skilled starmen could do with one. To be fair, that's pretty much true of a lot of Aegis ships. Sure, they look nice in the hangar, but it's when you see what one can do in action that your eyes get a little misty and your heart starts beating a little faster. But if you're sitting there right now saying, I don't really care for the Sabre, well, you're in luck because Aegis makes about a billion other combat ships to choose from. With the speed and variety with which their ships are pumped out, you have to wonder which will run out first, Vandul to kill or places to park. A question to ponder over until Galactic Tour returns with even more exclusive coverage from the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. the sheer size and scale of the Aerospace Expo, it can be easy to get overwhelmed by all there is to see and do. Luckily, you have Galactic Tour on hand to provide laser-like focus on only the best IAE has to offer. Today is no exception, as we set our sights on the mighty military machine that is Anvil Aerospace. From Hornets all the way to Super Hornets, Anvil ships are a classic example of designing with a purpose. Every angle of the hull and every rivet is there for a reason. And Anvil isn't happy just to rest on their blowing stuff up laurels. With the likes of the Carrack, Crucible and Terrapin in their lineup, Anvil has gone beyond military function to begin to really make a name for themselves in the private sector. Of course, a cynic might say that Anvil has to expand because Aegis is horning them out of all those sweet UEE contracts. But then again, I'm not a cynic. I say the more ships, the better. And boy, are there more ships coming up. Make sure you stay right there as Galactic Tours Intergalactic Aerospace Expo Special continues. Things are really going full blast as expo goers swarm the hall to get up close and personal with all the latest and greatest. And we're right alongside them, elbowing to the front of the line to get a first hand look at a brand that inspires as much loyalty as it does uncomfortable glances. I'm talking, of course, about Drake Interplanetary. If controversy made your ships fly better, then Drake ships would probably fly a heck of a lot better. That's not to say piloting a ship from the no-frills manufacturer doesn't have its advantages. These are ships designed to get you from A to B in one piece, often with all your stuff still aboard, and sometimes, if the rumours are to be believed, with other people's stuff too. To quote Drake's marketing team, these are multi-role vessels, which, when translated, means they may not do anything perfectly, but they do a hell of a lot pretty damn well. We'll put that to the test later on when we see if the Drake Caterpillar is the perfect ship for hosting a wedding. There's plenty more coming up as Galactic Tours Intergalactic Aerospace Expo Special continues. The really incredible thing about being here at the Intergalactic Aerospace Show is the unexpected surprises that sit idling around every corner. Everything and anything from utilising the urinal right next to a certain Squadron 42 pilot to realising my personal fantasy of piloting a Crusader Starliner loaded with the 2946 champion Goss swim team. Ladies, congrats again on the win. 
You see, on any typical day, the big manufacturers suck up all the air in the room. But at the Expo, regular type people have a wonderful chance to discover some real gems. There's the newcomers like Kruger Intergalactic and Consolidated Outlands, who are still trying to prove themselves worthy with their early outings like the P-52 and the Mustang. Then there's the more exotic options, like Esperia's beautifully reconstructed Prowler, or the Xi'an and their shifty Scout. Have you ever stood on those floaty stairs? Don't trust them. Sure, the ship flies like a leaf in the wind, but would a ramp have killed a POA? But maybe the best hidden treasures are the ones you can buy. With a full range of IAE exclusive items on sale, from rare parts to limited edition ships, Galactic Tour will take a hard look at which swag is the most drool-worthy when our special Intergalactic Aerospace Expo coverage returns. Here we are at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, surrounded by some of the fastest, sleekest, sexiest ships ever to be plasma forged from dicarbidium laminate, or whatever it is they actually make ships out of. And so, of course, Galactic Tour turns its attention to none other than the ships of Misk. That sound you just heard was the spectrum imploding with angry comments. But to those of you who doubt the beauty that resides in these flying steel sausages, I say to you that there is no manufacturer currently making ships half as interesting as these bastardized hybrids of human and Xi'an technology. While they may have the handling of your living room couch and cockpit visibility of a Min sunset, the bold design choices featured in the Reliant alone are enough to set my cold black heart beating again. MISC, like the way its ships handle cargo, is determined to drag us into the future. And whether you think the Xi'an are trustworthy or not, you have to admit that bastards know how to make a ship. Make sure you catch my one-on-one -on -one sit down with their lead Xenotech engineer when Galactic Tours Intergalactic Aerospace Expo returns. Jax McCleary here once again at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. And apologies if I look a bit tender around the tips. Last night was Origin's big Expo party, and let's just say I started off an M50. By the end of the evening, I was about an 890 jump. To be perfectly honest, I can't think of a better way for Origin's ships to be celebrated than with drunken revelry. From day one, Origin has been crafting vehicles that are as fun to fly as they are to look at. I'm talking the stuff of locker posters, the kind of ship that few middle-aged pilots can resist the allure of. Sure, people may think you're a pompous ass if you come cruising up to the local Cryastro in one, but what do you care? You own a 350R. And they don't. Of course, the fantasy does tend to fade a bit when you have to fly an Origin ship day in, day out, and a few of the more questionable design choices start to rear their ugly heads. Yes, for that much money, you'd expect the seat to be comfortable. And sure, they tend to drift more than a senator making a promise. But then again, who cares when you're flying a ship that looks as good as their new 85X? Speaking of looking good for an exorbitant amount of credits, I'm about to go and get custom fitted for a high-tech racing suit guaranteed to shave seconds off my lap time. Find out just how tightly it hugs to the curves of my body when our coverage of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo continues. Welcome back to the Expo. I'm Jax McCleary, and today Galactic Tour is going to be spending some time with the grandfather of them all, Roberts Space Industries. The name is almost as synonymous with spaceflight as the term spaceflight itself. Sadly, although they may have invented the quantum drive and dozens of other technological wonders we rely on every day, they haven't been at the cutting edge in centuries. But then that's not why you fly an RSI ship, is it? 
You fly them because, after all this time, their ships still remain at the forefront of exploration, on the front lines of battles, and in the hangars of new teenage pilots everywhere. You fly them because their ships work. And here on the expo floor, RSI is clearly working overtime. Not only are they bragging non-stop about their new Polaris, but they have their full, impressive range of ships in every class and size proudly on display. To that end, when we come back, we'll finally tackle the eternal question. How many Auroras can fit inside the mighty Bengal's main hangar? That and more as Galactic Tour's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo special continues. Well, there you have it. It's been an absolutely fantastic week, with this year's Expo going down as arguably the best one this year. Throughout it all, Galactic Tour has been there to give you the lowdown you longed for and bang up a few innocent ships along the way. From lumbering hulks to svelte sloops, today's ship enthusiast has no shortage of options. Sure, half of them may have their own unique quirks and peccadilloes, Yes, I'm the captain. No, I don't want to use the toilet with the door open. But the point is that the choice is there. And choice is a wonderful thing. The chances of you finding a ship you love are greater than ever. And with what the manufacturers have been showing off these past few days, it seems it's only going to get better. Like a Banu slave, I only have hope for the future. Of course, that doesn't mean that there aren't still plenty of festering piles flying out there that you're going to want to avoid stepping in. But that's what Galactic Tour is for, isn't it? I'm Jax McCleary, and thanks again for joining me this week at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Remember, life's too short not to be going as fast as you can. See you next time. Behold the majesty of the Anvil Pisces. A paragon of exploration, the Pisces features a dedicated scanner, convertible cabin space, and best of all, it's designed to fit snugly within the hangar of Anvil's perennial carrack. This one, however, fits in the palm of my hand. I'm Jax McCleary, and this is Whitley's Guide. For our premiere episode, we're here at the 2949 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, or more precisely, above it. And this is in fact not an Anvil Pisces, but a true-scale remote-controlled replica. It's accurate down to the last detail, and I've been told it's very expensive. So naturally, we're going to attempt to blow it up, because we're borderline obsessively committed to putting the galaxy's best gear to the test. For you. To that end, behind me you might have noticed the rather intimidating 2949 Anvil Ballista. We're about to put this mobile missile machine through the Whitley's ringer. The aim, so to speak, is to see if it really can take out our tiny target, even as I pilot it, Jimmy the stick please, through daring evasive manoeuvres. The missile we're launching is, of course, a dummy round with a diminutive explosive charge capable of taking out our tiny Pisces, but not much else. At least, that's what I've been told, and I hope it's accurate, lest the next landing zone over gets a very unfortunate surprise. Apologies in advance, Area 17. All right, then. Away we go. Well, will you look at that? It worked! And if that's not pinpoint targeting, I don't know what is. Colour me impressed, Anvil. And that's just the tip of the nose coat. There's a lot more to see here at the IAE. Ships to fly, new tech to test out, and presumably more objects to obliterate in the pursuit of consumer awareness. Plus, we should probably get off this roof before that guy in the vendor hall realises we borrowed one of his super expensive remote control ships. Wait, what? Don't you dare go anywhere. Whitley's Guide returns after these messages.
Roberts Space Industries. Three little words that say volumes. The manufacturer that set the original standard for spaceflight continues to defy its age and stay relevant in the modern era. From the origin-style bells and whistles gussying up the Constellation Phoenix to the more traditionally utilitarian Connie model and the exhaustive Aurora series, RSI offers plenty of reliable options for green pilots and crusty old pros alike. And of course, there's RSI's more aggressive side, exemplified by this lean, mean interdiction machine. Behold, the Mantis. A perennial favourite of law enforcement agencies and the scourge of space scum everywhere. That little doohickey in the front there? That's a state-of-the-art Waytech quantum enforcement device, or QED, and where the Mantis gets its bite, this little beauty can rip a ship out of quantum with ridiculous precision, a privilege that has previously been restricted to responsible and qualified pilots. So what do you say we test her out? Roomier in here than I expected. But a spacious cockpit isn't why the Mantis has the hearts of law and ordery types, a flutter. Let's get down to business and see if this thing does what it says in the brochure. Now, Jimmy is in a trusty Aurora around the other side of the planet. I'm going to fire up the QED, and when I give the signal, Jimmy is going to attempt to QT right past us. Here we go. You know, I honestly don't understand why advocacy agents seem so stuffy all the time. If my job entailed snaring ships out of QT, I'd be happy as a clam. Although, I suppose today my job does entail that and I don't have to deal with any violent criminals. Just Jimmy. So, win-win, I suppose. Stick around for more from the IAE and Whitley's Guide. Pure speed. Every year, it feels like the offerings here at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo get faster. Or maybe I'm just getting slower. Probably a little of both. Anyhow, I'm sitting here in a Kruger Archimedes. It may be a snub craft, but when you top out at 1,340 metres per second, well, no quantum drive, no problem. Jimmy is currently queuing up to purchase a presumably delightful frozen dessert down in the expo hall. Personally, I'm an Irma's farm man. Now, if this little minx is as speedy as they say she is, I should be able to get to the Irma's in Area 7, procure a tasty treat, and make it back both before it melts and before Jimmy gets through that massive line. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Close, but no cigar, Jimmy. <laughs> Hats off, Kruger. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to hunker down and determine which of these desserts is the true champion of this segment. So stick around for more Whitley's Guide. While mind-bending velocity and nausea-inducing G-forces certainly have their charms, not everything at the IAE is about blinding speed and sexy silhouettes. The titans of industrial aerospace are all here, flexing their muscles. Take MISC. Their freelancer series are perennial favourites of independent haulers, thanks to their famously ample cargo capacity and relatively small size. And with four discrete models to choose from, there's a freelancer flavour for nearly every taste, whether you fancy auxiliary fuel tanks or a heaping helping of missiles. But MISC isn't the only industrially inclined contributor to this year's exposition. 
Argo Astronautics for one are not content to rest on their utilitarian laurels. We're here at a super secret off-site location that definitely isn't an Argo production facility to get a first look at their 2949 Mole Multi-Crew Mining Machine. It's not only a paragon of alliteration, but is being touted as an excavation revelation with a more user-friendly control interface and sport-inspired stuff. Good news for all you aspiring diggers out there. Releasing in just a few weeks, you'll get to see firsthand the bonding experience that is simultaneous mining, just like Jimmy and me. Next on Whitley's Guide, we behold the inscrutable curiosities of the Exotics Pavilion and the IAE Food Court. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Exotics Pavilion, where aerospace xenophiles can scratch their wildest alien itches. Even this year's IAE Food Court is embracing the esoteric offerings of our non-human brethren. Take this. What is it again, Jimmy? They said it was pickled corpse bug. All right. Pickled corpse bug. Well done, the hatch. Let's go take a look. Every year, the exotic offerings on hand at the IAE get more robust, and 2949 looks to be no exception. From Esperia's chillingly accurate Van Duhl recreations, to Apoa's aggressive pursuit of the human market, through an expanding line of ships adapted from Xi'an military designs. Even the Banu adapted their stout defender fighter for human flight back in 2947. Both the ship and its related marketing efforts have come a long way in just a few years. I mean, has anyone seen their early attempts at an advert? Jimmy, do we have a clip? Well, I don't know much about advertising, but now that I see it again, I have to say I sort of miss that authentic Banu charm. Hmm. After the break, we head to the Aegis Dynamics Pavilion. Stick around. Now, I've been to every IAE in recent memory, and year after year, it remains a thrill to traipse amongst the multitudinous warbirds of Aegis Dynamics. From the classic Gladius to the Protean Avenger, Aegis has been at this a long time, and their fleet is celebrated to this day. The Vanguard series remains an industry standard in long-range fighters. The 2949 models sport vintage-inspired throwbacky exteriors, improved and expanded interior cabins, and of course, a lot of weapons. And if huge ballistic repeaters and a plethora of missiles aren't enough, you can always drop a few of these big nasties via the Nautilus mine layer, celebrating 400 years of service this year. To drive the point home, they've been trotting out these decommissioned proximity charge mines, which I'm told are completely safe. But what do you say we find out just how confident Aegis is about their prop here? Thank you, Jimmy. For science! <laughs> Next on Whitley's Guide, we parlay with the salty dogs at the Drake Interplanetary Pavilion. Cutlass, I don't even know the lass. Yeah! <laughs> Under the watch of hotshot Wunderkind CEO and an Arden, Drake Interplanetary has attempted to pull themselves out of the quagmire of controversy. If you ask me, they continue to turn out the same scrappy, dependable stuff while attempting to song and dance a white hat onto their admittedly tarnished image. But at the end of the day, you can't argue with results. That said, Drake claims that they no longer willingly sell their product to reprobates and nefarious Nellies. I'm about to go undercover, thank you, Jimmy, to find out if Drake's people are really towing the line or if they are beholden to the almighty credit. 
Here on Whitney's Guide, we aren't afraid to tackle serious issues. Come on. How many civilian ships do you think this thing can take down without rearming? Ten? Fifteen? You take credit ships? Oh, sorry, there's blood on those. You know, I'm a personal acquaintance of Jan Dredge. Too soon? Yeah, that's way too soon. So, between you and me, roughly how many human-sized slaves do you think we could fit in this cargo hold? Securing! Coming up, we put on our fanciest pants and then sully them with caviar and champagne as we bask in the uncut opulence of Origin Jumpworks. It's been a big couple of years for the quote-unquote sexiest shipmaker in the verse. Even as seemingly every ship manufacturer and their mum tries dipping their respective toes in the hot tub of luxury, Origin Jumpworks is not to be outdone and maybe more accessible than ever, heading into 2950. I know, I know, you're going to say, but Jax, I'm just not an Origin person. And are there plenty of complaints? Of course. But take the 600i. It's a totally viable exploration ship. But with so much to explore on the inside, you might never make it out of the bar. And speaking of loaded, the new 300 series can be tricked out with more bells, whistles and trim options than a Banu marketplace after everyone's eaten their nutrient bars. But before you write it off as more posh posturing for well-to-do shipophiles, I for one appreciate a little variety. After all, when you're stuck in Area 18 traffic, there's only so much silver and white you can look at without going a bit mad. And although it may be easy to poke fun at Origin, I can't deny that the ships are fun as hell to fly. And even if you aren't flying an Origin ship, simply being on one is an experience all of its own. So Origin would like you to meet the 890 Jump. The crown jewel in their fleet has been wowing expo goers all week long, providing a taste of the pure, uncut VIP experience. With an onboard pool, spa, cocktail lounge, commercial grade galley, dining hall, and a whole slew of ultra luxe accommodations, IAE attendees can finally experience, if even for a moment, what it's like to be super mega buy a planet and never go there rich. And take it from me, it's pretty great. Jimmy, champagne. And there you have it, folks. We've seen all there is to see at the Intergalactic Aerospace Exposition. We laughed, we cried, we caused a moderate amount of property damage. I'd like to thank the entire staff here at the IAE for not kicking us out on day one. I'd like to thank my producer, Jimmy, for deftly persuading the IAE staff to not kick us out on day one. And of course, I'd like to thank all of you lovely creatures for watching. This is Jax McCleary saying, see you next time on Whitley's Guide. All right, all right, who drank the last bottle of champagne? Really? Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2950. Whitley's Guide and me, Jax McCleary, are here to take you through it all. We're here on Microtech, going behind the scenes, under the hood, and deep undercover to bring you the galaxy's hottest ships from its coolest locale. See if you can keep up. For 2950, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is continuing its tour of Stanton, landing on the snowy slopes of Microtech. And while the weather outside may be frightful, the offerings at the Tobin Center are nothing short of delightful. Welcome to Whitley's Guide. Here 
in the consolidated Outland Pavilion, they're gearing up to unveil Silas's all-new Nomad, a ship that couples a welcome dash of unconventional design with bare-bones, no-frills performance under the hood. I had the powers that be at Whitley's arrange some hands-on time with the ship ahead of its release so I could go on a good old-fashioned excursion. From my very first glimpses of its hull, I've been bit hard by the travel bug. As we prepared for our trip, Jimmy got intimately acquainted with the Nomad's 24 SCU capacity external cargo hold. Well done, Jimmy. Over there with the other ones. Out here, finally free of the shackles of civilization, edible food, and air traffic laws, we were able to really flex the Nomad's muscles. Watch this, Jimmy! Let's test out these triple shield silos we're going on about, eh? Even triple shields are no match for reckless flying. Remember that, kids. How's it looking there, Jim? After sharing a few campfire stories, Jimmy and I decided to turn in under the stars. What was that? Jimmy? Jimmy? The onboard bed provides that extra level of security someone of my stature is used to. And convenient access to the laser repeaters made me rest extra easy. As our expedition came to a close, I couldn't help but feel that I'd tasted true freedom. Which, coming from a person who gets pretty much everything he wants, is saying something. As I spooled up the quantum drive one last time, I knew I'd return to civilization a changed man and that I'd never needed a shower so badly in my entire life. And here we are, Jimmy, safe and sound at IAE 2950. Now, it looks like they're getting ready for the official announcement, so uh, take over, would you, Jimmy? I've got to get over to the VIP lounge before the open bar closes. Back in 2944, we aimed to reshape the dream of space flight. Since then, much has changed. Nobody lives large, quite like Aegis Dynamics. Their massive cap ships are undeniable classics. Every year, folks flock to the IAE to get glorious stiff necks, looking up in wonder at these and the whole of Aegis's vaunted fleet. But a true gearhead like yours truly doesn't need to see these mighty vessels to tell them apart. One only needs to listen to the distinct song of their massive thrusters. Jimmy, the blindfold? I thank you. Here it comes. It's a javelin. No, Idris. Idris! Sir! inviting me to fly with them. Now, as you may know, I'm what some call a bit of a speed demon. And thanks to Commander Bunma and this special training model F-8, young Jaxie McCleary's childhood dreams are about to come true, to the tune of as many Gs as possible. Shall we, Commander? Let's do it. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this! <laughs> This year's IAE sponsor is none other than aerospace giant Crusader Industries. Now, Jimmy, 
and Whitley's entire operation is being run out of the massive hold of their literal aerospace giant, the Hercules Starlifter. But Crusader's not only about daunting behemoths, of course. Their fleet is as varied as it is useful, and lucky us, Whitley's, has full run of the entire lot. Take the hidden mysteries of the Mercury Star Runner. We'll get to the bottom of this ship, literally. Behold, the Devil's Roundabout. These 15 kilometers of nasty comprise a rancorous race course known to push pilots to the limits of technical capability. We're out here at MISC's official IAE event, gearing up for a demo that's, shall we say, prohibited by Microtech's speed limits. Can their speedy razor tame this beast of a course? Jimmy is about to find out. I'd do it, Jim but it's an insurance thing. I've had a lot of fun at Drake's expense over the years, but when you get down to it, there's no denying their power and versatility. Take the venerable Cutlass. With the red and blue variants, they continue to iterate on the classic chassis. Now we're here with reps from Drake, and I have the next Cutlass variant, the Cutlass Purple. <laughs> you know, for parties. Sound system, cocktail bar, glitter ball. The various alien offerings on hand at the IAE every year may be catering to niche markets. But could Tivarin craft be the industry's hottest new trend? Thanks to the popularity of Esperia's meticulous recreations, these lost classics aren't just for collectors or infiltration enthusiasts anymore. In fact, I found the stealthiest thing about their Prowler troop transport was how swiftly and silently it stole my heart. And peering into the future of Esperia's Tavarin line reveals their near-perfect remaster of the infamous Talon Fighter, a hit-and-run hell kite known for keeping naval pilots on their toes during the Tavarin conflicts. Only on Whitley's Guide. Origin Jumpworks high-performance vehicles service everything from blistering speeds to the peak of culture. Toughness, however, is not a quality commonly associated with the brand. With the 100 series, Origin is looking to change that. And we've got notorious bounty hunter and IAE mainstay, Junior Pardos, who's going to do his best to dirty up Origin's image a little. Ready to take this thing for a whirl, Junior? Couldn't have put it better myself. RSI is at it again. The elder statesman of the industry continues to inspire. Now we're all familiar with their fleet. Rugged land crawlers, medium-sized explorers, and dedicated peacemakers. But this year's convention floor is bristling with interest at the mysterious gunship they currently have in development. Now I, being me, was able to get some face time with the work-in-progress ship where our camera crew was unfortunately not allowed in. Fortunately, though, Jimmy is a great artist. The ship is, in a word, impressive. And don't just take Jimmy's drawings word for it. 
One of the RSI bigwigs showing me the ship was a huge fan, of course. And once the official tour was over, he let me sit in the turret where I was able to capture this super unauthorized, don't tell my bosses about it, double secret exclusive footage with my Moby glass. Ooh, can I sit in this turret? <laughs> These aren't loaded, are they? <laughs> Lead suckers! What does this button do? <laughs> And just between you and me, the word Perseus was stamped on, well, everything. So there you have it, folks. Whitley's Guide, bringing you so many exclusive reveals, we can't even keep track of the lawsuits. But we'll keep the lawyers on standby as we continue to explore IAE 2950. Making new friends, wild adventures, and of course, future memories. Time has come. To embark on another bold adventure. To face dangers, new and old. We feel your deeds far and wide. Everybody with me? Let's give them a show. When you finally stand victorious, we will stand beside you, united in purpose. when you thought it was safe to go back to Microtech. Oh, no good, no good! Here... we... go! Just 
when you thought it was safe to go back to Microtech, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is back for 2951. Welcome to Whitley's Guide. That frosty air can only mean we're back in your favourite winter wonderland, Microtech. We're currently gearing up to head to the Tobin Expo Centre in cooler than cool new Babbage and seizing the opportunity to put this Anvil Spartan through its proverbial paces. The team designed this not-so-little beauty specifically to transport the most precious cargo of all, your friends, family, favourite heavily armed mercenary outfit, etc. So if you're looking to get a load of folks from point A to point B and keep them all in one piece, then the Spartan was seemingly designed just for you. But this is Whitley's guide, so we aren't just going to take Anvil's word for it. Plus, hey Marty, how are you? I needed some uh, personnel to looking good, Merrill, to transport for this segment. And there's nothing my good to see you, Terry, executives here like more than not paying extras. Everybody in? Off we go. We're about to find out if this Spartan can stay cool under pressure, whilst keeping our friends back there relatively comfortable in the face of impossibly heavy turbulence. sound of silence means we've all survived, thanks to the handling of Anvil's Road Warrior. Which is all well and good, cos we're here. And with that, we kick off another Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, arriving in true Whitley style. And this year we've got more raw, uncut excitement, more pulse-pounding, heart-pumping, senses-shattering wildness than ever before. I mean, honestly, IAE 2951 What is, is this, McCleary? Is this segment supposed to be a callback to episode 223? Hold on, let, let's, let's cut. All right, we're cutting. Wait, what? Yeah, I've seen this before. BTS, keep rolling. Jimmy, are you in the edit bay? What is she on about? That's a little too close for comfort. How are you, shareholders? I... I don't believe it. I'm not sure what you're going for here, McCleary, but between you and me, the ratings haven't been wrong. Great. Listen, I'm rooting for you, though. Huge fan. Where are you all off to? VIP loud? Oh, hello. Oh, Jax. I don't know, Jimmy. Maybe this gig is passing me by. I mean, clearly I'm out of ideas. I'm rehashing old material without even realising it. Oh, sure, but who wants to see the same old bits? I mean, even in reverse. Maybe you're right, Jim. Or maybe we just need to pull out the big guns. Don't we have something amazing planned for the Aegis bit? I just need to clear my head, figure out an angle, and start fresh on the next segment. I'll be in my trailer. Behold, the mighty Aegis Redeemer. The once and future next great starship is bristling with uncut firepower, to the tune of six massive guns and a heaping helping of missiles, ready to jam down the gullet of any baddies foolish enough to give you any trouble. Today, we're set to find out if the infamous Redeemer can create 
as well as it can destroy. We filled this ship's auxiliary fuel tanks with a special paint mixture. Stay with me so that when I fire the thrusters just so, it'll spray stunning swathes of colour across that rooftop, which our fleet of MPUVs is turning into a giant canvas. The idea being to recreate the famous painting Tears of Fire on a massive scale. We'll just do a little bit of that at the bottom, finish that off. There we go. Jack Smurg Cleary. Ha! So, with precision controls and the spirit of artistic inspiration on our side, it's time to see if this thing makes as good a paintbrush as it does a devastating killing machine. myself and then I have the gall to think I can right the ship with some over-the-top stunt and it doesn't even bloody work. I don't care what the kids like, Jimmy. This is the bloody Aegis Redeemer. Uh, I can't believe I thought that using the nastiest gunship to ever make a vandal soil its bio-armour would be well served farting paint onto somebody's penthouse. I've lost my way, Jim. I don't think it's even about the ships anymore. Yeah, well, you host the show, Jimmy. I'm done. Jimmy, we're rolling. You want a bucket? Nope. We're over here, Jimmy. Uh-huh. Eyes front. Reset.
I still don't know how you're going to pull this bit off solo. Likely kill yourself. Oh my god, he's going to kill himself! done it without me. I mean, the cannons on those Ares models. What is that, like a size 7? That is nuts. Absolutely insane. Raw power. Couldn't have put it better myself, mate. This has been an eventful IAE, to say the least. But thanks to Jimmy here, I've been reminded of why I started doing all of this in the first place. At the end of the day, it's all about the ships. So here are some highlights of Intergalactic Aerospace Expos past and present. Ha <laughs> ha, it's a pirate's life for me, here at the Drake Pavilion. Just don't tell Jan Dredge. <laughs> Play, here we go. Oh, what's this do? Oh, 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 holy shit. Now, what's with this front wheel axle? And a fixed maneuvering thrust has really come through the clutch. <laughs> And once you figure out the floaty stairs, the car to all absolutely sinks in more ways than just Sean Opera. We've loaded up this Argo raft with several cases of Bon Durand Vesso Blanc de Blanc Reserve. That's right, two crates of sparkling wine worth more than my penthouse in Castor Point. Ridiculous? Certainly. Now, I was always terrible at this. Nailed it! Oh, I can't find the limit! Apology accepted! Jimmy? You okay, lad? What's this? Looking good, Jim. How old are you in this? Now go pose for a picture with your hero, Jack. Wow. Face me. Smile. <laughs> Say freelancer. Brilliant. Look at that. Damn it, Jimmy. That warms my heart. Makes me feel old as hell, but it warms my heart nonetheless. You're a good kid, Jimmy. You make me proud. Let's get out of here before they kick us out. Let's go and see what the hubbub's about over at the Mist Pavilion. Dare to fly. I think I still need to do some serious soul-searching, Jimmy. There it is. The Odyssey. This ship is something else, huh? I mean, supposedly, it basically becomes your own personal space station. Imagine just taking this thing out as far as you can, dropping anchor and just living. I mean, that's it, Jimmy. The Whitley's just got their hands on an Odyssey prototype. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if I borrowed it, you know, for a little sabbatical someplace. I don't know, like the pyro system. 
Oh, some place like that. I mean, some place where no one will bother me. I, I need to get my head straight before next season. If I even make it back, that is. <laughs> okay, everything is looking good. This is it. I'll miss you too, Jimmy. But to wait up for me, mate. Asking the really big questions. Then, taking that first step to an answer. Or supporting the people of the Empire in times of crisis. It's about doing what's right, even in the face of impossible danger. shield our homes from the threats both outside and inside our border. It's about living up to the proud tradition of this uniform and those who gave their lives for it. So, yes, the universe is full of beginnings. But no matter where our paths take us, we all have our place in the fleet. United in purpose. Biggest Whitley's Guide IAE Special yet, with exclusive looks at all your favorite manufacturers. Break CEO and an Arden. Plus, surprises and announcements you won't want to miss. We'll see you there. Liberty, ingenuity, quality. These ideals connect each and every one of us across this vast empire of stars. As such, I want you all to meet the 2952 Cutter from Drake Interplanetary. Oh yeah. <laughs> this ship embodies those ideals that we are truly democratizing. Who needs to hire talent when the aerospace CEOs are dying to get on camera? Hey, eh, Jimmy? <laughs> the it's all about the hard-working people of the UEE. That's why we're excited to sponsor the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2952. See you in STEM. <laughs> what 
What in the unholy hell? They think I'm dead? Unbelievable! Bob! I cannot believe that they moved on without me. After everything I did for them, would a call have killed them? Oh, hey, Jax, do you want to come back, host the show? I'm sorry, Jax can't take your call because he's dead. Bob! Ah, Bob, now, I need to take the Corsair. <laughs> Good one. Now, I came out here to get inspired, and I've just been hanging around, tending to my garden, and pillaging and plundering with you lot. Are you talking to me? You don't understand, Bob. My bosses have killed me off screen. I've got to get back to Stanton. Is this ship flight ready? Whoa. Whoa! Whoa, Jax! But you can't have my ship. Oh, come on, Bob. You owe me. You stole my Odyssey right when I got to Pyra. But you stole it back. And crashed it. And crashed it. You well, fair point. Did the boys already chop that new Drake cutter? No, I told you I'm keeping that one. I kind of like it. Handles nice. Bob! Please? No. But it's just sitting there. You know what, Jax? Fine. If it'll keep you out of trouble for a while, you can borrow the cutter. Thank you, Bob. I said borrow. Thanks, Bob. Jax! Bye! Don't fly angry! Right. Are we on? Ah, OK. Right. Jax McCleary here. Obviously, I'm not dead. Just thought you should know. Looks like we're going back to Stanton. Here we go! Okay. Ah, throttle's over here. Interesting. That does make a little bit more sense. Okay. Here we go. Time? I don't know. Oh, it was right where he said it was! Oh, yeah. Yeah. And to think we tracked it's your little oh. Drake ship here oh. to kill you! Oh. 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 Yeah, that's what we did it for. Well, guys, I, I, I do know my way around an 890, and since you hide out, say, derelict origin super yacht, I may as well take advantage, so. Come on, Jax! Stay for a treat! It's kind of you, really. It is kind, but uh, I've got to get back to Stanton, no, so, but we'd so love I'll, to I'll just have say you. bye bye. I'd love to have you for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Whoa, 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 whoa! No need to resort to fisticuffs to decide whose Aegis ship is the better. No, 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 no. For crying out loud! Go get in your damn ships! Come on! Let's take it to the tarmac, shall we? All right then, friends. Gladius versus Sabre. Let's settle this thing once and for all sans violence. I mean, I used to do this kind of thing on my show all the time. Are they ready? This is a bad idea! Sounds good! See, we've arranged a tower of barrels for each ship to blast. Each ship has the standard factory loadout. So let's see how that Gellington Mantis GT220... Oh! Maybe we should get out of here. Where have I put the cutter? Oh, there it is! It finally happened. I got hit with one of those famous pyro solar flares, and the cutter has frankly, well... Not being herself. But by good fortune of the Banu god of backwaters, I found this marketplace. Ah, my good man. Do you happen to have a power coupling for a. Ooh. Are those vandal parts? <sighs> um. Now, tell me, are those Esperia replicas or um, are they the real deal? You like to walk on the wild side, man? <laughs> <laughs> I can dig it. I can assure you these parts... Whoa. Are you recording this, man? Uh, oh, no, no, it's not what you think. Whoa, not cool, man. Whoa, not cool. But I'm super cool. I, whoa. It's okay, I'm cool. I am 
I'm cool. No, 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 it's all wrong. The RSI Galaxy prototype didn't show, and now the piece is a mess. Well, figure out how to punch this up while I go prep the anvil segment. Oh, come on, Jimmy, you're supposed to be good at this. Pick yourself up, mate. No time to feel sorry for you. Uh, hello? Um... Oh. Oh. oh my god! Oh my god, this one is crazy! Uh. He's poking him <laughs> with this. Ah. <laughs> Still alive! Oh, there's one of those new Anvil C8R ambulance snubs I've heard about. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Jimmy. Well, you've been watching these videos, right? Well, this one's crazy. Well, seriously? Oh, it, it, it's, it's great stuff. Jax has been beaming it from Pyro. Oh. <laughs> what? Well, we'll have you back out there, patched up and saving lives as soon as we possibly can. If I can work out how to use this built-in med bed. Jimmy? Where did he go? Now, a local homesteader has kindly agreed to provide me with the parts I need for the cutter on the condition that I figure out what's wrong with his mole. Now, in my experience, these Argo beasts rarely break down, so it's anybody's guess what the issue is. OK, let's see what we can see. Pretty good. OK. All right. Okay. Almost got it. Ah! Oh. Ugh. Well, I fixed it. The mole should run fine now. I do have some bad news though. <laughs> you got crabs. Come on. Oh. Oh. oh, that was close. Wait. So, I kind of crashed my cutter. Well, Bob's cutter. Don't tell Bob. Right into a racer and their trusty Cyclone RC. Yeah, well, fortunately, the rest of the competitors here agreed not to murder me if I took the incapacitated racer's place in the upcoming heat. Let's see if I can beat my time on the tumbrel test track. Here we go! Shit! I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay, nobody cares. So, with my cutter out of commission, I stowed away in the extra-large hold of this MISC Freelancer Max. I should be through the Stanton jump point, and I've landed at a nearby rest stop. Ready? Freedom! No! No, 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 no. No. No, I mean, this cannot be happening to me! Hey, you! You! Where are you, man? We're in station. You mean... I'm still in Pyro? Ugh... This rate, I'll miss next year's IAE. So, folks, Ruin Station is about as big as it is creepy. Maybe, maybe we can find a ship to stow away on and... Whoa... What is this? A new ship? For RSI. Whoa. Oh shit. What the 
How much for this thing? It's a damn prototype! Yeah, exactly! Ain't nobody else got one. Well, you throw a brand new coat of paint on this, and you'll be good. And the red, my friend, squeaky clean. <laughs> what the hell is that? Just some kind of ambush or something? Oh, this is no ambush, right? Uh, that will be a, a rodent or something. Rodent? This place. You is... think I'm stupid? Ah, no, you're smart. Very smart. This is a smart deal. Tell your man to stand down, or I'm gonna blow your goddamn head off. Oh. Hi there. Just, uh, just looking for the bar. I think that's Jacks McCleary. How you doing? <laughs> Boys, we've been hacked! Kill him! the last transmission? Has anyone seen Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? It was wild. I thought Jax was done for. Is that McCleary? <laughs> ah, I'll tell you what, Jimmy. If you hadn't shown up when you did, I would have been dead. But if Bob and the crew hadn't swooped in, we'd both be ink spots on the ruin station pavement. I owe both of you big time. Don't mention it. Now strap in, boys. It's a long way to the jump point. We need to get a crew out there. Like a, a, an Apollo rescue team? Or... No, a camera crew. Ah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is just the format change we need. Plenty of time, Jim, for you and I to riff on ideas for next season, huh? And we could hit a couple of my favourite pyro haunts on the way back. I could show you around, introduce you to some of the locals. Yeah, I still can't believe you managed to find me by tracking my transmissions. Whoa, crap! Not again!
together. United in purpose. Experience a universe of possibilities. Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2953. All your favorite ships and manufacturers. Plus, a few new surprises. Touching down at Tobin Expo Center, November 17th. Hello folks, Garmin Humble here, back on the mean streets of Area 18. Cities like this are teeming with scumbags and lowlifes that would just as soon shoot you in the face as give you the time of day. That's where I come in. When preparing for patrol, it's important to check your armor, your sidearm, and of course, limber up. Staying loose is your number one weapon when it comes to stopping crime. Trust me, the only thing standing between you and an unceremonious death in the gutter are security professionals like me. Me. Oh, there, buddy. Oh, take a step back now. Who the hell are you? Garmin Humble, freelance security professional. A freelance cop. Oh, for crying out loud. And coming with me. Die, fake pig. Armor? Check. Sidearm? Check. Should have stretched, scumbag. Oh my God. Don't worry, uh, no need to thank me. Uh, you're welcome. Stop the crime. Burrito time. Hello, folks. Garvin Humble back again. And today, we're going after a high-profile bounty. Hey, bud, do me a favor. Stay here and watch the stalker for me. <laughs> Little joke there. But seriously, never risk your shit if you don't have to, folks. Okay. So if my intel is good, and, and it always is, the mark should be holed up somewhere down in that little backwater probably dug in deep. This manhunt could take days, weeks, even months. This guy's well connected and... Oh! Wow. That's his ship there. Guess I better get down there. The Mark is likely to be jumpy, with a bounty this size on his head. Not that the credits matter to me, of course. It's all about the justice. Oh shit, they're taking off already? Jesus. Okay, folks. Here we go. Oh! Oh! Jeez, I didn't have time to stretch! There. Oh, all right. Now let's find this. Nope. You aren't the mark. Oh, hello. You, throw down your weapons and... Okay, so, uh, so much for bringing him in alive. Who the fuck are you? Easy there, big guy. Don't make me use it. Yeah. Oh shit. Time to go. All right. Here we go. I always want to do this. <laughs> Mission complete. Burrito. I eat. There you go. Hi friends, it's your Molly, and on my way to Orison. Stunning clouds and the planet is gorgeous. Big shout out to Origin Jumpworks for hooking me up with this entire experience. We're on an 890 jump. Yacht life! Origin Jumpworks has totally pulled out all the stops for this special intergalactic aerospace expo series. What a mouthful. But love, they totally hooked me up with the most luxe ride, the most happening cities in Stanton. Bye, Origin crew. Not sure what this is, but my niece will live for it. Look at Crusader HQ. Just standing here makes me feel rich. So apparently they're storm walls, not whales. Had to get a picture of the statue, duh. 
100% tourist vibes. Like the total tourist that knocked over my Moby. Rude. Loki though, Orison is beautiful. These fountains, the cherry blossoms, everything. It's a moment. Anyway, y'all need to be here. Gonna end my day relaxing with a sunset cocktail. Thanks, Inner Black. Inner... Um, whatever. IAE. Cheers, babes. New Spectrum post tomorrow. Friends, wait for the end of this video. Day two and tomorrow I'm blasting off to Microtech in the intergalactic aerospace. IAE, y'all know what I mean. Light workout before my store wall tour. I'm seriously so excited for this and want to say thanks again to Origin, my amazing sponsors. People are obsessed with these whale storm walls. See, I'm learning. The person in this costume. I mean, how adorable. I'm on this shuttle thing, guys. Way less fancy than the Origin one and full of tourists. <gasps> Real storm walls. They are seriously amazing. Got back on land and things started to get real weird. First off, some people full on ran into me. Red flag numero uno. Didn't even notice the crusader security. Second red flag. Then in the middle of my food selfie, some randoms burst in and start shooting. Friends, this may be my last. Stay tuned for my next post to see if I survive. <gasps> oh my God. What happened? My head. <gasps> they must be like pirates. I I'm gonna keep rolling, see what happens. <gasps> the shuttle! There's my ride! Just gotta get over there. <gasps> oh, Crusader security! I'm saved! Like, ugh, where is the shuttle? That looks like it could get me out of here. If I could just make it over there. Yeah, you go over there. That's right. Don't turn around, don't turn around. Here goes nothing. Well, friends, that was wild, right? And now here I am back on this lovely 890 jump and headed to New Babbage for the IAE. Once again, basking in the opulence of the full Origin Jump Works experience. It obviously takes more than fanatical pirates to slow me down. See you at the expo, babes. In a galaxy so vast, can one person make an impact? How do we rise above? Through camaraderie and
competition, we coalesce. In our darkest hours, when all seems hopelessly lost, and in our proudest moments, we find in each other strength, hope, solidarity, the courage to leave the familiar behind in pursuit of the next great adventure. One person can make an impact, but together, we are capable of greatness. Each of us, part of something bigger. One galaxy, one empire, united in purpose.